Hey everybody, I wanted to show you a technique that I think is great for trying to get a high poly model and turning it into an in-game ready mesh with textures as quickly as possible. I've used this technique for prototypes as well as for Carcinerator, a game jam game I made at TO Jam. So this technique works really quickly and this game was made in only about 48 hours uh, just by myself for the art and I had no idea what I was actually trying to create in the first place. So the main thing is, is all we really need is ZBrush and Substance Painter and we can get art done really, really fast. So inside ZBrush, what we're going to do is just basically take a look at our high poly model, which has a whole bunch of details and parts to it, elements, subtools, and we're just going to put them all into one subtool by itself. Then what we're actually going to do is go down into our Dynamesh options and we're basically just going to turn off project and basically just at a relatively low resolution just Dynamesh it all together so that basically it's just all combined at this point. Now what we're going to use is things like H polish and trim dynamic to basically just remove some of these little tiny fiddly details. The reason that we want to do this is because we're going to Dynamesh this model in a moment because quite frankly it's pretty easy to make a low poly model with Dynamesh. The problem is is it tends to create a few too many details in certain sections. It'll, it'll start to add in stuff you don't need. So you want to remove some of those pieces that are just not necessary uh, such as these little cracks and things like that. That means Dynamesh is not going to go across those surfaces complicating your low poly object and giving you little details that you don't really need and wanted to exclude in the first place. So basically just go across your model and like simplify some of these basic elements. The reason that we clean up the model is because if you try to decimate the model by itself, this high poly model with all these details, you will get a reasonable result in a way with Decimation Master. The problem is, is it'll include certain details that you're not paying attention to, you won't get a chance to look over your model, and certain little errors will start to permeate your model, and they're going to just take up your try count and waste your time. Also, you're going to get little indentations and things like that that you don't need. You can certainly clean them up, but it's pretty decent if you can try to clean them up beforehand. So. In the end, what we want is a cleaned up model like this. So just to compare, you can kind of see how there's a lot of little details here across this section of the model. But what we want to do is kind of remove those, flatten out those spaces, and basically start to make this look a little bit more like a low poly model. And you can Dynamesh this again many, many times so that you get something that closes up certain holes if there are any, or anything like that. That way, when we decimate, we end up with something that's quite a bit more manageable and actually has some not too terrible topology and doesn't waste a lot of polygons on sections that we don't actually need. Now at this point, we're going to want to make an unwrap. So you're going to want to use Select Lasso. So Control Shift and drag. So what we're going to do is just go across here. Now I am going to hold Alt as well so that this turns red. It's going to remove that section there. Now I can go down to my geometry and or rather polygroups and down here we can just say group visible and then we're just basically going to remove a little bit more information and in this case say group visible we can bring this back out and start to just remove a few more component pieces from this let's just hold alt for that this time and just keep removing sections here I find it easier to hide rather than simply um, show than just group visible grab this section it's not a precise science, but you can just keep grouping visible at this point, just to kind of keep cutting out different sections, so that when this actually goes, group visible, you get something that's going to work out pretty decently. And at this point too, we can also just go to our geometry tab, modify geometry, and delete symmetry. So that's going to remove one half of our model, and you'll see we've got something pretty decent to work with. Now at this point, we can just straight up toss this into our UV master in our plugins area. We can turn symmetry off, just say unwrap. Now what's going to happen by default is if we look at the unwrap itself, it's going to keep it all as one piece. If we say polygroups, when we do this, we can unwrap, and we're actually going to end up with a pretty decent unwrap given the circumstances. So this is not ideal, but it'll certainly work in a lot of situations. At this point, we can just say mirror and weld again, and we've got our model completed out, and we've got our UVs stacking on top of each other, and everything's going to work pretty decently, at which point we can just export this and get it into our appropriate engine. Now, inside Substance, we can simply just create a new file, select our geometry, our low poly model, drop that in, pick bake textures, grab the piece that we need, our high poly model, and basically just start baking right away. 
at which point we basically have our entire model set up and ready to go for us. So basically we can see that we've got all the baking information that we need and we could start just dropping in some basic color choices and things like that. So we could start to just pick things out, start to mask by color selection, pick the areas that we want, and start blocking this in in a lot more detail. With a very, very small amount of work, in this case only about 10-15 minutes, I was able to get this weapon to about this point. Basically just to get a bit of a simple setup here with a little bit of a missive going on to kind of simulate a bit of the translucency of the ice. And that's basically it. I'm going to share this with you as well just to make sure that you can see all of the details that are in here, but all of this can go into a game engine pretty much right away, be exported and dropped into your game engine real fast, and basically just mean that you can get art into games really, really quickly. The high poly process is what takes the longest, and I prefer to be able to spend as little time as possible creating my low poly meshes and getting them in game to see if they're working. That way I can decide at that point if I wanna clean up the mesh a whole bunch more, make sure that the geometry is a whole lot more worthwhile. But at this point, I've still got a pretty manageable workflow and you could still take this into max, clean it up further, fix the unwrap a little bit more, do any kind of additional work that you wanna do and it's all additive. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe if you wanna be able to see more. I'd love to be able to share stuff with you. Please comment if there's any other kinds of videos you'd like to find out about or other kind of questions that you have about this workflow.